uh, practically is as follows. We use a gradient. So directional derivative of f Okay, so apparently in class I can differentiate properly but not get my notation straight if I'm writing the notes, it's vice versa. Whatever. All right. So then the directional derivative of f in the direction of u is the gradient dot product with u. So, in the case of two variables, we have, oh look, I did it right that time, um, x naught, y naught, it's going to be um, partial depth with respect to x, x naught, y naught, times a, plus a partial with respect to y, times b. Um, now using the, um, so that's using the mathematical definition of dot product. Using a more physics type definition of dot product, this would be the magnitude of the gradient times cosine theta, where theta is the angle. between the gradient at that point and u. Because okay. normally it's the magnitude of both vectors and the cosine of the angle, but the magnitude of u is 1, because it's a unit vector. Okay. So once you have the partial derivatives, then you'll have no problem computing the directional derivatives in any direction. As far as where this comes from, I've worked it out in the notes for this two-variable case, all you need to do is you uh, use the add-subtract trick in order to um, get, take, get, take this expression, and when you take the limit, you end up having the partial derivatives with respect to x and y pop right out. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, so, before we do an example, and I actually mentioned this briefly on the very first day of class, um, if you look at the directional derivative from this point of view, then we can answer these questions. Okay. Um, that we have. Um, When is directional derivative maximized? Okay, so along what direction is f changing, is f increasing at the greatest rate? So in other words, which direction should we differentiate along? What? Um, I think it might be trig functions mixed up. So when theta is zero, then cosine is one, which yeah, that's what you were, you were saying. Uh, cosine is one. So so theta is equal to zero. So geometrically, what does that say about you? Um, how how does that? What? In the same direction. Oh uh, yeah, same direction. So you, since it has to be a unit vector, it must be the gradient of f over its magnitude. Okay. All right. So that is the direction of steepest ascent. So that's where f is changing most rapidly. All right. 
So if that's the direction of steepest ascent, what is the direction of steepest descent? <coughs> so, yeah, 180 or pi, uh, 180 degrees or pi radians, where cosine theta is equal to minus 1. So we just turn tail around the other direction from the direction of steepest ascent. So u is going to be <coughs> minus gradient over its magnitude. Okay. Um, and finally, when does a function not change at all? In what directions? Horizontal. No. Vertical. Um, yeah, um, so in the two dimensions would be, uh, so the angle would be 90, de 90 degrees or 270 degrees or pi over 2 and minus pi over 2. Uh, so in other words, if the gradient and u are <coughs> perpendicular to one another. Uh, so in two dimensions, there's going to be two vectors that are pointing in opposite directions that will fit the bill. Um, but if you go to more variables, you have infinitely many directions uh, that will do this. So, um, so what that means is, this gives you an idea of where the level curves go, and what direction they go from any particular point. Right. So, um, so, so the direction of that, the, of that, that, that curve is, perpendicular to the uh, gradient. So, let's see, get a different color here. If, ow. So, make that straight. If this is a gradient, Then the view, the unit vector in this direction. So this is the direction of uh, uh, greatest increase going the opposite way from this point. The steep of decrease. And then along any direction that's perpendicular here, here, no change. So from any particular point, there's likely going to be some direction along which uh, the function is not changing at all. So between these two extremes of steepest increase, steepest decrease. All right. <clears throat> all right. Now, steepest descent is a very important concept when it comes to <clears throat> finding where a function of several variables has a minimum. We're going to talk about that more on Thursday. but Suppose you have some point, where, like a starting point, and you're trying to find out where the function is minimized, and you're not at that point yet. You follow the direction of steepest descent. Uh, so you, uh, so what you do is, say, so minimize function uh, f of x y. So you start at x naught, y naught, and then you set your new guess, x1, y1, to be your starting point plus a constant, which I'll call alpha, times a vector p, where p is the direction of steepest descent. So it's minus the gradient at that point over its magnitude. Um, so, in order to choose alpha, you solve a single variable minimization problem, like you did in 167.